I'm David Lloyd, Matt Barry, Shanae Agwumake, and the strange limbo over the business end of this season began last night. In yeah, D. Lloyd, it is a bit strange. Anthony Davis started his post-trade deadline basketball for a team, by the way, he no longer yep. wants to play for. T-Wolves and Pelicans. The Pelicans announced yesterday that Davis would play the rest of the season rather than be sent home, albeit lighter schedule than normal. More on that in a minute. First time he's played since January 18th. And, well, the crowd let him hear about it. Now, rightfully so, the crowd would, would be booing, and some young Timberwolves fans got in it, but then they, they would change their tune pretty quick. All you need in life is a dunk. Even the owner will cheer for you. But today, but look, with all due respect to the minutes and the drama, Anthony Davis played really, really well in the first half last night. Yeah, he's like a professional tease. It's not fair. The ability of him to be able to finish and just pick up where he left off was true. Davis scored 24 points in the first half. That tied the most he's had by a half this season. Fourth quarter now. Davis finished on the bench, 32 points. Carl Anthony Towns, big play. Yeah, this is a huge play. But if you think about the Pelicans, I mean, that would make him squirm that's I, I do the same thing if I'm not in down the clutch but look he demanded the trade he's not going to play in the fourth quarter Pelicans are going to make a statement there Julius Randle nice move Pelicans win 122 117 but again Davis not there in the fourth quarter I just want to play basketball the other, the other stuff also I know also a noise the Twitter rants uh, it's all good. <laughs> it's all good, man. I just go play basketball. That's it. It doesn't bother me. You know, I want to play. You know, and being able to go out there and play the game I love um, for 25 minutes, it was fun. That's definitely going to be a story to watch throughout the season. He will not play on back-to-backs. It's going to be a lighter schedule. Anthony Davis will still play basketball for the Pelicans, at least for now. When he was on the court, New Orleans outscored Minnesota by 22 and assisted on 22 of 26 field goals. But when Davis was off the floor, the Pelicans <laughs> were outscored by 17 points and five assists. You like you like that, today? Awkward. Yeah, it is. A little, it is getting a little weird. Uh, meanwhile, Tobias Harris traded from the Clips earlier in the week, making his debut for the Sixers. Unfortunately for his big intro, they flashed Robert Covington's name. He was the last guy to wear number 33. Really? That, that's not how you spell Tobias. I no, don't think you know, not it? at all. Okay, so we, we messed that one up. We'll get it. We'll get it together. He's in a mismatch here on Jokic, and he held his ground pretty nicely. This is a guy that not only is known for his offense, but defense. He's not a guy you can exploit either. And then Ben Simmons find the new guy, and there hey, he is. I mean, it's storybook. It's great. I know Tobias Harris, and this is a guy that is not only going to add great power offensively and defensively, but also as a person, just a good dude. He said it was awesome last night in Philly, and then he finds another new guy. James Ennis over there, acquired from Houston. So Harris putting his stamp on this team first time out. But J.J. Redick, a lot of talk about the core four, Shanae. J.J. Redick is like, hey, don't forget about me. Oh, that's what they say, core four. J.J. Redick might be the most important piece to their lineup because he keeps Jimmy and Joel and Ben happy by providing spacing with the shooting you see right there. People forget, he's the third leading scorer uh, on this yeah. team. Wake up, folks. Was sick, hadn't played in a week, and responded in a big way. 34 points in this game. That's the most he's ever scored as a sixer. Yeah. So we go to the fourth quarter now. Good game. Sixers up two. Jokic, great find for Mason Plummer. I mean, that guy is such a gifted passer. Not It's regardless of position, honestly. Yep, he had his 11th triple-double, but Simmons off the hesitation move. Heavy. Right to the rack. Bully. And the Sixers win it. How did it feel, Tobias? I was for sure a little nervous. I'm not going to lie. Uh, coming into the situation, obviously I've been traded before, but you know this is a this is a big trade to just get myself going and um, for our team and you know there's high expectations. So I just wanted to get out there and do anything I could to help our team win. And once I got out there and got playing and saw the talent, it was awesome. So the new starting lineup: Butler, Embiid, Harris, Redick, and Simmons outscored the Nuggets' very good basketball team by 14 on Friday. Also shot 56 percent from the field and held Denver to 45 percent. However, talk about the depth on this Sixers team. When the Sixers used any other five-man lineup, they were outscored by seven points. Doris Burke had some high praise for this new Sixers lineup. 
I saw what Tobias Harris has been over the last couple of years, which is an incredibly efficient three-point shooter, a guy who can play the second side of the floor, go off the bounce if necessary, exploit a mismatch. I believe this because I don't think uh, DeMarcus Cousins is 100% the DeMarcus Cousins we come to know. The Sixers may very well, in fact, have the best starting lineup in basketball. We'll get today's comments on the Sixers lineup in just a minute, but first, Warriors and Suns. Phoenix came in losers of 12 straight. Warriors have won the last 17 straight against the Suns. Uh, today, Warriors off to a little bit of a sloppy start last night. I'm not going to lie. It's hard to get up for the worst team in the West, <laughs> not only one of the worst teams in the league. This is a team that you can sort of beat in your sleep. Uh, we'll find out later if they actually do. You know what I like about you? Not holding back in your thoughts for the Suns. <laughs> uh, Draymond Green not holding back on his thoughts for a no call, give it a technical for arguing with the ref, and then Boogie, he'd get in on it. He got one for barking at the officials. Warriors would trail by as many as 17 in the first half. You say it best, right? Bad and Boogie? Bad and Boogie. <laughs> what about Kelly Oubre at the line? I love it. He was being bad, but all the right types of bad. Look at this. Get up in his face. I'm surprised Draymond Green did not fight back right there. Okay, but here's what he does do. He would not do anything there, but then he would go chirp at the official, and then he would get his seventh career ejection and first of the season because he didn't like that an O call was made. But I know what happens here. This is where you can't really perform. So what do you do? The last trick in the book, get fake mad to use that as motivation. How about the Warriors? Four technicals in this one. They got a little bit of edge to them. Okay. And Boogie's a big reason why. Yeah, Boogie's huge, especially for them finishing in the rim. But if you look at this, they just got easy baskets time and time again. You have to close out, Suns, if you want to beat the defending champ. Clay Thompson celebrated his 29th birthday yesterday. Tie at 94. And then the Warriors kind of pulled away late. In fact, they outscored the Suns 35-22 in the fourth quarter. 14 and 1 since January 5th, which means they are finding their stride at the right time. They win 117 to 107. So since Boogie made his debut on January 18th, the Warriors have been near perfect. 7 and 1, averaging three more points and allowing six fewer points per game than they did without him. So the Boogie effect is real. Today, hanging out with us this morning, I said a second ago we would talk about Doris Burke's comments about saying the Sixers are the best lineup in the league now. That's what she believes. Where do you believe the Sixers lineup ranks? You can't argue with Doris Burke, y'all. No. She's the GOAT. Let's be real here. But I truly believe statistically we'll show it, but this is a team that's really the best in the league if you look at their starting lineup. And Tobias Harris really sets them over the edge. Why? Well, he's able to switch defensively like he did with the Clippers. And offensively, he's going to keep Joel and Jimmy happy because he's able to space the floor. But if you look at this lineup statistically, it is absurd. Joel Embiid gives you 27 points per game. Tobias gives you 21 on the year. Jimmy gives you 20. JJ gives you 19. People sleep on JJ. And Ben Simmons not only gives you 17, but a 17-point triple-double. So if you look at the starting lineup, this is the craziest start starting lineup you'll see in the NBA, even over the Warriors. Now, if you think about, okay, what is the mindset of this team? If the Warriors are great shooters with Katie and Steph, the mindset of this team is going to be long, physical, lanky, defenders tough. This is a Philly team that can make its mark by bullying the rest hmm. of the league. We'll see, see how quickly they can mesh. Butler kind of a new guy to the starting lineup, and now you add Harris. We'll see how that plays out. Meanwhile, we know now that Anthony Davis may not finish games, but he's going to <laughs> finish the season with the Pelicans. True. What is that situation like for all concerned? If there is one word to describe the whole Anthony Davis Pelican saga and the not thing that happened with the Lakers, now you're back with your team, it's awkward. It's 100% awkward. Because if you look at this as a teammate, you're playing with a guy that does not want to be there. Yep, okay. But he's a good teammate. He took a 50,000 five for you. But he can still get 32 in 25 minutes. It's ridiculous. And as a team, you bench him in the fourth quarter because you're trying to keep him healthy as a prospect. But what happens at the end? You, you're you supposed to lose the game when you bench your best player. Right. You win the game. So it's like <laughs> awkward all around. I don't know what to do. And, and let's make no mistake. You want to lose games now at this point. And you're you don't want to get the 100 West. per game fine either. No, because you're with a guy who doesn't want to be there, but yet they need him to be good to acquire as much equity from this player as they can. Can't even break up with your X-ray. A bad team has never been so worth the watch come the end of the season. Cheney with us all morning. Cheney, thank you. Davis, still a Pelican. We showed you this at the top of the show, what he did as he returned to the lineup. 32 points. He only played three quarters, 11 of 15 from the field. Uh, let's take a close look at his performance from Friday, shall we, in case you missed it. He sure played well early on, even though it was a mix of boos and cheers. He scored 12 points while Carl Anthony Towns was his primary defender. Davis shot six of seven from the field against his fellow team LeBron All-Star teammate. 
And then Davis was effective when he was on the floor as well. The Pelicans recorded a plus minus a plus 22 with Davis on the floor. Yeah, compare that to a minus 17 with Davis off the floor. So if you love the plus minus thing, there it says it all. He played only 24 minutes and 49 seconds. I mean, this is not new. I mean, when Anthony Davis is on the floor, everyone around him plays better. But, you know, whatever. He scored 32 points in less than 25 minutes for the first time of his career. He played zero minutes in the fourth. 32 and nine is what he finished with. But here's Davis on all the noise surrounding him. So it doesn't bother me. You know, I just want to play basketball. The other, the other stuff, also had, no, also had noise. The Twitter rants. Uh, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, man. So I just go play basketball. That's it. It doesn't bother me. You know, I want to play. You know, and being able to go out there and play the game I love um, for 25 minutes, it was fun. Does any part of you regret how the last two weeks played out? No. I never regret anything I do. For more on Anthony Davis, we bring in our Jeff Van Gundy, who called the game in New Orleans. And Jeff, AD returned to the court for the first time in nine games, went for 32 and nine. You know, the Pelicans have said he will play the remainder of the season. But put yourself in Alvin Gentry's shoes. How would you handle him and his situation moving forward? Well, unfortunately, I don't think it's up to Alvin Gentry. And I don't even think it's up to the organization. They, from all you read, they're being demanded that they play him. And I think the rubber's meeting the road tomorrow. Obviously, if they're trying to win, he will play. If Anthony Davis wants to play every game like he says, he'll play. But we know that sometimes what we hear and the truth are far different things. So I'm interested to see if he plays tomorrow. And to me, if the organization is having to be forced by the league to play him, then if Anthony Davis doesn't want to play in back-to-backs, he can't be unilaterally able to say when he's going to play and when he's not. Yeah, it's definitely worth watching and uh, not a shocker. Sometimes we don't know what goes on behind the scenes, especially, as you know, in the NBA. Jeff Van Gundy with the latest from New Orleans. Thank you, Jeff. you got to remember, uh, Linda, everybody lies in professional sports. <laughs> Thanks. Breaking news. Thank yeah. you, Jeff. Hey, Chauncey Billups is going to tell us the truth, though, about what he thinks about the situation in New Orleans and which team is the team to beat in the East after they made moves